So a lot of different fans, they have a lot of different favorite times of the year when it comes to football season, besides football season. Uh, some fans, like myself, probably our favorite time of the year is free agency because I love all the craziness, all the trades, all the signings, all this player moving to that team and this player moving to that team and who could my team possibly get to take them over the top and make them that much better. I love the excitement of it. I love the drama of it. I, I love free agency so much. But then you have another set of people where we're nine days away from their favorite three days out of the football year. And that is the draft. You have a lot of people who absolutely love the draft. They, they love the pre-draft process. They love looking at all the prospects. They love analyzing and going over their, their strengths, their weaknesses, their traits, their everything. And shout out to them for that um, because we're close. We're close. We are nine days away from finally getting so many questions answered. We're nine days away from finding out if the Ravens are actually going to stay at 14. We're nine days away from seeing if they're going to trade up or trade down. Uh, we're nine days away from all the speculation that they could possibly trade back into the first round and take a second first round pick. We're nine days away to seeing exactly what the Ravens are going to do come draft time. Uh, but the Ravens, this is something that they've been preparing for for a very, very uh, long time because you know that they love the draft as well. Um, and part of the preparation process is bringing in some different guys uh, on some pre-draft visits. And they, of course, have had different guys come in. I think um, KT, he came in a couple weeks ago, uh, pinning. Uh, I think Linderbaum came in too. But anyway, a guy that um, has been getting a lot of buzz from a lot of Ravens fans. Um, and I feel like it's one of those things where a lot of Ravens fans either love him or hate him. From what I've been seeing, I feel like a lot more Ravens fans love him more than hate him. And that is one Jordan Davis. Um, it was said by Tom Pelissero that Jordan Davis, he already had his pre-draft visits with the Ravens. Um, and of course, we know with Jordan Davis, he that's a big boy. Like, I'm a big boy, but no, 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 Jordan Davis, that, that, that's a big boy right there, man. Um, and I, I remember when I first initially watched film on him, I loved it. I loved it. Uh, because he, he isn't an Aaron Donald, but he also isn't uh, a Brandon Williams. And when I say Brandon Williams, that's not a shot at Brandon Williams. Um, but with Jordan Davis, what just thinking about what he could do, for the Baltimore Ravens, if they do decide to choose him uh, at pick number 14 or wherever they just so happen to pick from. Could be higher, could be later. We'll see. Um, but if they were to choose a Jordan Davis um, in the first round, because he, he's not going to get out of the first round. He ain't, he ain't making it past the first round. He will be a first round draft pick. Uh, that is for sure. Um, but if they are to get him, um, I, I wouldn't be mad at that at all. And actually, my expectations for the Ravens um, this this upcoming draft uh, in the first round, if they just stay at four, if they only have one first round pick, I am like 150 percent sure that it'll be defense first. I don't have a problem with that, whether they go corner, whether they go interior defensive lineman, whether they go edge guy. I fully expect the Ravens to go defense first. But then in offense. In that second round. That's that's just the way that I see it. Um, and that's what we've been talking about for the longest. Y'all know. First three rounds. Ravens drafting a receiver. First three rounds. I keep saying it. Now the only way that that changes is if the Ravens trade for somebody. But other than that. First three rounds. Ravens drafting a receiver. But we're not here to talk about that. Um, but with Jordan Davis. What he could bring. Um, just his presence. His, his presence alone. Uh, and something that we've been talking about all offseason, both on offense, on defense, we've been talking about just making everybody's job easier, helping out everybody around you, make, taking a lot off of their plate so they can be more relaxed, they can be more comfortable, uh, they can just be more fluid in whatever it is that they have to do and, and whatever their assignment is. And you, <laughs> and you bring on a Jordan Davis? You bring on a Jordan Davis, my goodness, especially if Ravens getting ready to move to a 4-3, he just commands so much attention, man. 
He commands so much attention. He would make whatever other interior defensive lineman's job next to him easier. Whether it's Calais Campbell, whether it's Matt Abike, whether it's Broderick Washington, whether it's somebody, Michael Pierce. He would make their job so much easier. And then you think about, you know, the Ravens' number one priority on defense, stop the run. You have a Michael Pierce, that's a big boy. Uh, you have a Jordan Davis that's an even bigger boy. Um, then there's, again, Calais Campbell, too. Run stuffers. Ain't nobody running up the middle on that. And then you have a Dafe away as an edge guy. You have Jadavian Cl- You have whoever else as your other edge guy. And it, it could just be a beautiful thing, man. It could be a beautiful thing. And, and I just, I would love it. Because it makes the interior defensive lineman's job easier. Uh, for the, the edge guys, it gives them an opportunity to go one-on-one with the, the offensive tackles on the opposing team. With the linebackers, remember Ray Lewis? Ray Lewis specifically requested for the – well, not even requested. He told the Ravens, hey, you need to give me some help up front. You need to give me some help up front. What do they do? They say, oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry, Ray Ray. Sorry. We, we apologize. We, we, sorry. Lodi Nada. And you see what a difference Lodi Nada made when it comes to the Ravens. Now, I wouldn't expect Jordan Davis to be a Lodi Nada. No. Um, but just his presence, what that could do for Patrick Queen. We saw what we saw how Patrick Queen, how better he looked when he played loose. How better he looked when um because he just got his confidence back. Because you could tell, like, again, early on he was like a little bit shaky. Then they brought Josh Bynes back again. Uh, and that allowed Patrick, they alleviated some of his duties. And that just allowed him to be more loose, play more confidently, and, and he played better. And then toward the end of the season, it did still get a little bit shaky, but it, it was better than what it, what it had been at the beginning of the season. So he, was, he started doing his thing. So having a big boy up front to where you don't have to engage with the offensive lineman as much if you're Patrick Queen or if you're Josh Bynes or you're whatever other linebacker they may draft or, or have there. You, for, for those offensive linemen to be fully engaged with him Because it, it cannot just be one guy It's not just going to be one guy he, he, the, the attention that he commands Again, it will make the linebackers' jobs that much easier Then you think about the secondary With the secondary um, If the, the pass rush is not If Jordan Davis is making the interior job that much easier Then he's making the edge guy's job that much easier So he's allowing them to get to the quarterback that much easier So that allows the secondary To have to be on those islands For a lot less amount of time A shorter amount of time Because you know like A corner This is where corners can be very tricky Because a corner can get overrated because they can get overrated by a good pass rush. And, I mean, well, we know that the Ravens have some actually, actual good corners in Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey. So imagine if their job, which they're, they're both pretty good at, but imagine if their job got even easier. Imagine that. If, if Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters' job got even easier, that would be beautiful. And then that makes Chuck Clark's job that much easier. That will make Marcus Williams' introduction to this defense that much easier. That's what the theme should be. And this is for whoever it is that they get on the interior, whether it's Jordan Davis or it ends up being somebody else. Whoever is there, they they really need to get somebody who commands attention, uh, somebody who is very disruptive, somebody who can cause Havoc in the middle They really do Because that would make Everybody's job that Much easier That much easier Imagine um, Jordan Davis next to Matt Abike. We've been Seeing flashes of Matt Abike Here and there uh, throughout His past couple of years In the league which is his first couple of years In the league we've been seeing the Flashes um, but I would imagine somebody like Jordan Davis, who just would command so much attention that um, he would be able to help Matabike go off. And not even necessarily go off, but he would really help 
uh, the Ravens to, to bring out that potential that we keep hearing about with Matt Abike, that we've, we've seen here and there from Matt Abike, but we just haven't got to see it consistently. He would be able to bring that out, help bring that out. Imagine a, a, a Ravens defense where they can actually collapse a pocket on <laughs> a quarterback. Imagine that. Because they, they haven't had that. They haven't been this defense that just collapses a pocket, man. Imagine a, a, a Ravens defense to where it's not a bunch of almost sacks. Because Ravens, that's, that's Ravens right there, man, as, as y'all already know. That's Ravens all day. Ravens, I think, they probably led the league the past couple years in almost sacks. And, ah, we just didn't make it there. Ah, we got the pass rush. We got pressure, but we just couldn't close the deal. Imagine that. Um, so, again, with them bringing in him on a visit, um, it doesn't, not that it doesn't mean anything, but it, it won't mean anything unless they draft him. Um, but the visits are just to... Sort of get to know the player a little bit more. Uh, go over some stuff with him. Check him out in person. Because you, you, of course, you've seen all the film. You watched all the games. You watched all the tape. But this is sort of like a part of the interview process. And just to yeah, really get to know them. So uh, we'll see if Jordan Davis, if as much as the Ravens are really getting to know him, uh, if they end up making that move before somebody else does now because again they got people in front of them that could certainly select him but I, I think it's it's gonna be tough it's gonna be tough and, and I know um that first night of the draft uh it's gonna be crazy I know Ravens Twitter is gonna be crazy I know um the YouTube during the, the live stream the team keep it clean first round draft live stream y'all know how we do it uh, that's that's going to be crazy because Ravens are going to have a lot of options. They're going to have so many options as far as who they could select. Whether offensive players, defensive players. Like I said, I still do believe first round they go on defense no matter what. But um, uh, they're going to have a lot of options. And since they're going to have so many options, they're going to have a lot of quality people that are on the board when they do pick. Um, there's going to be a lot of people that agree with whoever they pick and a lot of people that disagree with whoever they pick. And that's just how it's going to be. That's, and that's how it is, especially in the early rounds, because so much depends on these early round players. Um, but the biggest thing that we hope for, well, me personally, the biggest thing that I hope for, that the Ravens really go after in this draft. You have 10 picks. Again, I I don't expect them to use all 10, but at the same time, we, as we get closer, um, they, they, they got a lot, of, uh, a lot of little holes to fill. Um, on offense, you could get some more quality, uh, youthful offensive linemen. Of course, y'all know I've been talking about getting an impact wide receiver uh, from this draft unless they trade for somebody. Um, but that's what they could do on offense. Um, oh, and another tight end, another dynamic uh, sort of Mark Andrews, stretch the field type of tight end. Now, you can wait for a little bit to do that. Um, but then on defense, uh, you got holes that kind of got holes at linebacker. You got holes at edge. You got interior defensive linemen. You got holes at cornerback as far as just the depth at cornerback. Because after your two starters, like it's like, oof, ooh, yikes. Even though I would expect Brandon Stevens to play a lot of cornerback. He'll probably play a lot of outside corner and Marlon Humphrey will probably go to the slot. But that's that's the early projection. With the with the draft coming up, all of that could change. All of that could change. But you know Brandon Stevens, he's gonna be on the field. You know he's gonna be on the field. Cause Ravens, they adore him. And and again, he as the season went on, he got better and better and better. So he he's gonna be on the field a lot though. Um but yeah, man, this should be uh, the, with however the draft goes, man. They just need to get impact players. They need to get guys. And I know not every single draft pick can be a starter. Not every single draft pick is going to see the field right away because you got guys that are ahead of them. But especially as far as those early picks, you got to try to get as many impactful players as you can. Guys that you really not just guys that you say, oh, man, this guy is going to be a great Raven. I don't know. But guys that you actually really feel can come in and contribute right away, right away, especially with the early picks. 
Guys that you could feel could start right away. Not guys, oh, well, we'll bring them along as a season. No, 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 no. Guys that can come in right away and make a difference on your team. So it's going to be fun. We're going to be watching and waiting and live streaming, of course. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited, man. Because like I said earlier, a lot of questions will finally get answered. Of course, the draft always is full of surprises, too. Some guys go a lot earlier than projected. Some guys go, go a lot later than projected. Uh, but that's all part of draft season. And I know y'all draft heads, y'all draft nerds, y'all draft people. I, I know y'all are loving every bit of this right now. And I'm happy for y'all. I'm happy for y'all because I, one thing that I love about draft season is um, I love how the people who where this is their favorite part of the year, they, they get to share that information with everybody else. Uh, and you can really tell who's very passionate about it and who really loves it and who really like because people, they be doing that research because a lot of people who, who especially who watch college football, they've been watching these guys all year. Well, obviously during the season, they've been watching these guys and they've been seeing these guys progress and whatnot. And now these guys are draft eligible. And it's like, OK, I know about that guy. Oh, I know about that guy. Oh, I know about him. So it's going to be a fun time. Anyway, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And we out.